The smell of coffee is in the air. It must be time for another episode of The Art of Struggle. Welcome to another episode of my podcast called The Art of Struggle. You can hear me write about art, video games, movies, pop culture, CGI, the industry, and much, much more. My name is Fatai, and I'll be your guide as we explore the world of CG, pop culture, and the people who make it all possible. It seems success is a double-edged sword. Um, Take two. Uh, Creators of Red Dead Redemption 2 have been falling under a lot of criticism as of late due to crunch time hours. Uh, Current and former employees of the company have been complaining about the culture around there uh, and how the crunch is almost mandatory, in some cases mandatory, and if you go through and you just you just check out some of the things that have been said, it's, it's quite disturbing when you think about it. Um, and this is why I say success is a double-edged sword, is that because Red Dead and GTA and the franchise that um, take two, just how polished their games have to be and how massive the scales of the games are because they're not just making like one little area or a few different maps they're making entire cities with living breathing people in-game content constant add-ons that are released monthly you know to feed a demand and The double-edged sword is that it takes a massive, a massive amount of manpower where they have a bunch of different offices in a bunch of different places. They have a New York office, a a Cali office, I think a UK office, you know? So they have different branches and there's people from all these different branches giving similar crunch stories. And and there's like one of the guys in um, in New York, don't let me quote it wrong, He talks about how they have to pull just these these crazy, crazy hours. He said, crunch gradually goes up until you're in a state where you're working all available hours. Basically, a Rockstar North employee told me, you do 40 hours a week and that's fine and normal. And then things get busier and you do 60 to 70 hours a week. And you do that a long time. And then you get mandated weekend days. So they'll pull you into the office and say, we want everyone on every Saturday for the next X amount of months. Um, And we don't want anyone taking time off. And then it would be, uh, we want to start seeing you every second Sunday. And then it's, uh, why weren't you, why weren't you in a work? He said he got that on GTA 5, and then he said, well, I've done everything. And the response would be, well, uh, we need to see you in. He said it did genuinely seem like it was a lot of hours for very little gain. And I think that's the problem, is that they, they built that culture and that atmosphere that I feel like they're trying to train people and keep them in that heightened state all the time because you don't know when a big crunch is going to come you don't know when the you know and if you keep people in that state you know they've got stories of people sleeping under the table and the thing is um i don't know how to, i i want to say in the sense of like there's a passion that some guys have and i want i don't want to discount that at all because like there's some guys out there that love this shit. I'm telling you, they love this shit. This is what they live, they breathe, they die this shit. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that the guys who want to go home at when they're supposed to go home, they, they don't live and die and bleed this shit. But there are some people who are just so fanatical and who are so just like, I will do everything, I will lay it all on the line. And I feel like a lot of the time those bigger companies bank on those kind of artists, those kind of people. Um, those guys that are willing to, because it's a culture, like it's, you know, you feel like you're part of the family. These are the people that are making the games that you've always wanted to play your whole life. 
and then they call you up to the big leagues. They're like, yo, come on in. Come on, bring it in, bring it in. You don't think you would. It's like, for us, for artists, it's like getting a chance to play in the major league. And if you get a chance to play in the major league, yo, you're going to do everything in your power to stay your ass in a major league. You ain't going to jeopardize it. If they ask you to stay till the next week, I'm st- I guess I'm, hey, I guess I'll see you next. Your fam- if they tell you not to see your family, hey, sorry, mom, I'll see you when you have multiple birthdays coming up. You know, you will do whatever it takes for these companies, and I feel like a lot of these companies take advantage of that. You know, like uh, uh, just just really big companies. I feel like use that. Your you you want to be a part of this community and they give you that you know and there's some companies that are, are out there that do good with their um to do good by their employees and they don't misuse or mistreat these people who who just really love what they do who really want to make this stuff the best and i feel like you guys should accommodate these guys if they're gonna fucking sleep there like make a separate part of your division where it's almost like a hotel or something where they're catered for if these are the people that are making you billions i'm saying billions and billions of dollars then you need to treat these people appropriately you need to treat these people right because these are the people that are making the things that everybody loves that is getting you the eight awards that you're gonna get this year the eight nominations that you're getting this year uh ten cent or uh, two cent whatever the hell your name is the, the that is because of the people that is because of the the artists that are on your team so all of you like mistreating and and, and making these people work freaking 100 hours a week not seeing their families this guy says he doesn't like this shit gets me mad because it's like this guy says he hasn't seen his family in freaking months he sees his immediate family like every couple of weeks what kind of life is that you know what i'm saying like You've, you've got to have a certain level, you know, it's, it's, man, it's just, it's sad, you know, like, it almost makes me not want to play the game, it almost makes me not want to give them money, because this is, when you find out this is how they treat their employees, the people that make that stuff so awesome, you know what I'm saying, like, it's just, it's just so sad, like, like, if you get a chance, man, you guys have to check this article out, um, Yeah, he says it's called mandatory overtime or extended hours. It's pretty clear. Someone who worked on GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 told me that there was a point on GTA 5 when we were brought into a department and they told, and then we were told we'd be working an extra 16 hours a week now. Another person recalled that was as official as anything became. It was pretty much... We'd really appreciate you working an extra 16 hours a week. And if you don't, we won't appreciate it. The truth is, they're not making it mandatory. So once you don't do it, once you, you know, if you do it, you're a team player. But if you don't, you're, they're not going to tell it to your face. But they've got like a secret book that they've marked it down. Oh, this guy, we told him to crunch and he didn't crunch. He didn't do what we, he didn't tow the line. And the moment you're like, hey, can I go see my baby? Or can I go see my family? Or can I go, you know, they're like, oh, so you don't care about the company. What about your workload? What about, you know? So it's just, it's, it's ridiculously sad. It's re- like, some people would come to work with sleeping bags. And the thing is, like, there's cute situations when this was, like, the case. When, like, Disney, the early start of, start of Pixar, when they were making Toy Story, there were stories of them, you know, staying late and, and working 24 hours. And, and to me, it was, a, it was like a dream come true because you were working on something you loved. And you, there was a light at the end of the tunnel for the guys at Disney. And what the culture that i feel like red dead is is different is because they they didn't expect their success like the success that they saw on gta 5 online which is why i feel like their their culture is changing because tencent they they used to be innovative rockstar games they were they're still innovators but it's just the this practice of 
crunching the people that that are working on it. You know, like there's a reason your shit is so polished is because you're working these motherfuckers like they slaves or something. Like you working these people to the bone and you need to chill out. Like you're burning artists out. Like and that's not cool. That's not cool. That doesn't it's not going to foster an industry that's that's going to be useful that that can work and that, you know, when you're treating people like disposable objects, man, that's not cool. Like cuz these people like battery they they, they got to recharge they got to they got to have a, a good balance you know there's some people that love that and they can crunch and they don't have the responsibilities and the you know the, the other things that other people do and they, they can do that for you more power to them more power to those people who can you know do that because there's some people who can't and you've got to accept that and i think that that's that's the big issue and um yeah, man, somebody's going to have to look into it. It's just, it's crazy. They have to bring, you know, they would work until 2 or 3 in the morning, then unroll their sleeping bags, go to sleep under the desk, and then get up at 6 or 7 and start working again. It was usually two nights because it would become unbearable. And then you do a normal day, finishing at 8 o'clock. Their normal day was from 9 a.m. to 8 o'clock. I'm not going to say I haven't done that. But it was because I was genuinely passionate about what I was doing. I was like, yo, I, I want to see this project finished. I want to see how, it, you know, I wanted to make sure it was done. But I was volunteering to do it. I wasn't, they weren't like, uh, if you don't do it, you're, you know, we're going to write your name in this black book and we're not going to. You know, so somebody who worked on GTA 5 said it got to the point where I was napping under my desk. I wasn't the only one. It got to the point where it hit lunch times or the equivalent as I work nights and you would get people having a sleep under their desk rather than eating. You were just so exhausted. During the port of GTA 5 to, GT, uh, to PS4 and Xbox One, we crunched for a year straight. Uh, a year straight, just straight crunch time. Our usual hours from 9 a.m. to 8.30 p.m., Monday to Saturday. Some were asked to work Sundays and throw away any weekend or day off. I mean, y'all were getting paid for it, but man, that is some rough hours. For an entire year, you're just in crunch time. And they haven't released Red Dead Redemption uh, online yet. And that's dropping sometime this month. It's probably going to drop this week, next week. Uh, there's only a couple of weeks left in November. And so I know these people are probably going to have to crunch right now. And if Red Dead Redemption 2 does the same numbers and does the same thing that GTA has managed to do, which is make Tencent billions, I mean billions billions of dollars they have revolutionized they have changed and not in the best way too. how in-game transactions do it's crazy how we all give uh ea like we throw a fit when ea does anything with in-game transactions they even raise the price on a lightsaber you are boycotting ea forever you ain't never buying it but gta 5 charges you they they make it, you get in that game, you can spend a hundred dollars, you can't even buy anything worth anything. You might be able to buy a car or something, you ain't buying nothing with that. A hundred dollars of real, actual human money, human real people, my money. Uh -huh. After I've already bought the motherfucking sixty dollar game, the game is probably still sixty dollars right now. After I've already bought that, I mean. It's just, it's insane. A hundred dollars in real cash will give me eight million dollars in in-game currency, which is worth nothing. Eight million dollars is nothing. The in-game currency in that game is so ridiculous. It's not even, it's, and then there's just the people who grift all day long. There's the people who will just grief you. There's, uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like they revolutionized and ruined in-game like just just the, the 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 global the way the 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 money works in the game the economy yeah the in-game economy they have like if that's their plan with red dead redemption 2 i swear to god i will be so mad i'm gonna play it but i will be so 
mad. It's just so ridiculous. Like it's it's such a crazy thing that like they can do so much more. I feel like you've made so mu- you've made so many so much money off of GTA Five billions of dollars. Why don't you invest in telling stories and in, in you know like with Red Dead Redemption Two, beautiful story. You're telling an awesome story. You've got billions of dollars. Build a living facility for these people on your campuses. Make it so that the people who are making your games are comfortable. That's my number one thing right there. Before we even deal with your in-game purchases, deal with the people that are making your games properly. So, like, and that's one of the things I I, I, I grief about with with uh, with game companies and game makers is just like the 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 way they treat people. You know, there's a few out there that are good to people and they they treat their people with kindness and they give you however many days off you need. They give you maternity, paternity leave, all them, all the leaves and everything. They do good by you. And then there's just some, they, they do little underhanded things, little, little things behind you that like you just can't trust them. And, the, you know, and that's what gives the industry a bad name sometimes. And it's up to us, the people in the industry, to fix this shit. We gotta let them know. We can't just like sit down and anonymously give stories to Game of Sutra and Kotaku. Yo, you gotta talk. You gotta stand up. You know. And the the thing is, they ruin unions. They you know ruin. You, you can't unionize because they're gonna fire your asses. They just gonna replace you with somebody from China or somebody somebody who's you know. And then that's it. And the thing is, like we've almost lost our power when it comes to these giant conglomerate companies that's why indie's coming back because so that we can have a voice the people can have a voice the people and i think that's what drove the indie revolution was that a bunch of these people who were mistreated by the industry getting out just doing it on their own and doing their thing and i want to thank you for listening to another episode of my podcast called the art of struggle my name is ty and i'm signing out Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, At the bottom, click the little bell for notifications on new episodes whenever they drop. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.